Hey, welcome back to Hardly Tech. Today we'll be taking a look at performance in Diablo 2 Resurrected on the GTX 1050 Ti. Now normally for these tests I would stick to 1080p, 1440p, and 4K for performance testing. However, since this GPU is fairly old at this point, and is more of an entry level GPU, I thought it would be good to test at 720, 768, and 900p as well. Just in case someone out there is still rocking a lower resolution display, like an older HD TV or an older monitor that used those middle resolutions that aren't quite as common these days, and wants to know what performance is like on the GTX 1050 Ti before they potentially buy Diablo 2 Resurrected. For today's test, we'll be using the low preset, the medium preset, and the very high preset. With one change, transparency quality is set to ultra on the very high preset as this seemed to give better performance and better image quality. Don't ask me how, because I don't know. That's just my experience with it. One thing to note before we begin. Due to the randomized nature of the maps and enemy placements, it was challenging to get similar runs across multiple tests. I did my best to keep runs as similar as possible, and where I couldn't, I made sure to at least find some combat to push the 1050 Ti as much as possible. If you enjoyed this ridiculous content, help me curb stomp that algorithm by subscribing all over that button. And now, back to our regularly scheduled programming. First up is 1280 by 720. At low, we get very good frame rates, above 120 FPS throughout gameplay. So there's really not a lot more to say. If you're playing at 720p on low settings, have fun. That's a great frame rate. At medium, the 1050 Ti maintains right around 100 FPS and there's definitely an improvement to image quality with all the extra effects and foliage on screen. And honestly, this is how I would say you should play if you're going to play at 720p. At least use the medium preset, maybe a mix of medium and high until you're right around the 60fps mark. On the very high preset, however, even at 720p, we're not getting a steady 60fps, even if I weren't recording. However, if you have a VRR-capable display, you could probably play this and have a tear-free experience and not even really notice that you're playing below 60 FPS. Next, we have 1366 by 768. On the low preset, we're once again maintaining above 120 FPS in performance-heavy scenes, which is pretty cool considering the nature of this GPU. On the medium preset, we start to see the extra effects take their toll on performance as we see frame rates cut nearly in half. We're able to maintain above 60 FPS, and in most cases, above 72 FPS. So if you're one of those people that has a 72 or 75 Hz display, you would see some benefit here. And finally, at the very high preset, we're once again below 60 FPS, sometimes dipping as low as 42. Not the best experience, but the game is still playable. I would recommend reducing settings to the high preset, and you should be able to hit that 60 FPS mark. Moving up to 1600 by 900, we still have a pretty good experience overall. On the low preset during heavy combat, we're getting frame rates in the low 80 FPS range, sometimes dipping into the high 70s, but this is definitely a playable experience. With the medium preset, we're skirting that 60 FPS mark, sometimes dropping into the mid 50s. Other times, frame rates are as high as around 70 FPS, so not too bad. With a VRR display, this would be mostly unnoticeable. On the very high preset, however, frame rates are in the mid-40 range, sometimes as low as 38 to 39 FPS. Not as smooth as I would like personally, at only 900p, but this is an older card that only has 4GB of VRAM, so try to keep that in mind. If you'd like to help support Hardly Tech directly, consider becoming a Patreon member. Link is on the Hardly Tech main page here on YouTube. Now we're finally at the usual culprit, 1080p. Performance on the low preset is pretty similar to the 900p performance level. High 70 FPS during heavy combat, up to the low 90s while walking around in empty-ish fields. On medium, however, we're dipping around 50 FPS during combat, and up to the mid-high 50 FPS range while walking around. On very high preset, we start to see the limitations of the 1050 Ti. During combat, we drop below 30 FPS, and this is where I'd say that performance really isn't good enough to have a good experience. At this FPS range, we see not only animation skipping, but it's honestly hard to line up with enemies to make contact. Oftentimes, I would target a specific enemy or item pickup and end up walking past them, because by the time I'd clicked, the target had moved already. 
I would recommend sticking to the medium preset at 1080p on the 1050 Ti, or at least using custom settings to find your preferred performance target. 1440p is where we really start to push this little GPU past what it's really capable of across all of the presets. On low, the frame rate varies between 40 to about 50 FPS for the most part, at times coming up to about 55-ish FPS, and with a good VRR display, this would be mostly fine. However, the image quality really takes a hit. It's not so ugly that the game is unplayable or anything like that, but the game doesn't look great, let's be honest. Moving up to the medium preset, we're hovering right around the 30 FPS mark, dipping similarly to how we saw at the 1080p very high preset. And again, this is where I'd say this is too much for a good experience. This game does look vastly better in my opinion at medium compared to low, but it's just not a smooth, playable experience. Moving up to the very high preset, and we're talking like 20, 22 FPS. Woo, doggy! Now that's performance! Lastly, and probably leastly, leasterly, leastest, <coughs> we stumble into 4K. My recommendation is to don't. Scotty do! On low, we get similar performance to 1440p at very high. Low to mid 20 FPS, and the game looks a bit blech. But if you really want to play Diablo 2 this way, more power to you. On the medium preset, it just gets worse. Like 15 FPS, half animations, hard to make contact, behind on all of your aiming. Moving up to very high, it's basically a slideshow. Take me down to the slideshow city where the grass is A-list and the textures are muddy. This is definitely not a playable experience, and I only included it in the test to show how bad performance is. If you'd like to keep up on the day-to-day -day here at Hardly Tech, check me out over on Twitter at Hardly underscore Tech. So, in conclusion, yep, you can play Diablo 2 Resurrected on ye old GTX 1050 Ti, as long as you keep your expectations and your settings low. Or medium. Medium's mostly fine. A lot of older gen GPUs are still fairly capable today, as long as you're willing to make some concessions on in-game settings or resolution. Heck, I even did the first half of the video editing for this video on the 1050 Ti and had a pretty decent experience with it. Far better than I had anticipated. So don't give up on those old GPUs if you're still rocking one. If you're stuck on an older GPU and really wanting an upgrade, I recommend taking a look at my review of the RTX 3060 from Asus. Asus? Asus, Asus, Asus. <clears throat> it's a great mid-range GPU, and the power target is fairly low considering the state of modern GPUs. And if for some reason that's not enough power for you, check out my review of MSI's 3060 Ti. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. If this video sated your curiosity, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe all! It really helps the channel and lets me know what kind of content you all enjoy. I'll see you all on the next video. Bye. Take me down to the slide so shitty. <laughs> what the f***?